Welcome to ASVAB Tutoring. Today we will be going over lesson one, which covers addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Let's start off with addition. In this example, we are being told to add up 71,325 to 6,132. In order to figure this out, we must start with the ones place and add up all the columns starting from there. So let's do this together. In the ones place, we have five plus two, which is equal to seven. In the tens place, we have two plus three, which is equal to five. In the hundreds place, we have three plus one, which is equal to four. In the thousands place, we have one plus six, which is equal to seven. And then in, in the ten thousands place, we have seven, which is just gonna give us seven. So our final answer turns out to be 77,457. Going on to the next problem, we are being told to add up 9,735 to 899. So we'll just follow the same rules once again and start in the ones place and add up all the columns. So in the ones place, we have five plus nine, which is equal to 14. And because 14 is a double digit number, we have to carry over the one from 14 to the tens place. So in the tens place, we'll be adding up one plus three plus nine, which gives us 13. And then the 13 is also a double digit number. So we'll carry over the one to the, thousand, to the hundreds place. And then we will be adding up one plus seven plus eight to get 16. And then we'll carry over the one once again and get nine plus one, which is equal to 10. So our answer turns out to be 10,634. Now it's time for a practice problem. So what I want you to do is pause this video and try this problem on your own and see if you get the same answer as I did. Let's move on to subtraction. In this example, we are being told to subtract 97,685 minus 3,542. And so in order to solve this, we'll do it from the ones place and then subtract our way from there from each column. So in the ones place, we have five minus two, which is equal to three. In the tens place, we have eight minus four, which is equal to four. In the hundreds place, we have six minus five, which is equal to one. In the thousands place, we have seven minus three, which is equal to four. And then in the 10 thousands place, we have nine, which is equal to nine. And so our final answer turns out to be 94,143 for this example. Going on to the next problem, we are being told to solve 93,125 minus 8,767. In order to solve this, we'll go again in the ones place and work our way from there. And so in the ones place, we have five minus seven, which is actually a problem because we can't do this. Five is actually less than seven. So in order to help us out, we will have to borrow a 10 to make this five a bigger number. And we'll borrow that 10 from the tens place. And so this two will become a one and this five will become a 15. And so now 15 minus seven is equal to eight. So now when we move on to the tens place, we have one minus six. And because one is less than six, we'll have to borrow a 10 to make this a bigger number. And so we'll borrow that 10 from the hundreds place this time. And so this one will become a zero. And this, this one right here will become a 10. And so 10 minus six is equal to four. And now going on to the hundreds place, we have zero minus seven. And because zero is less than seven, we'll have to borrow another 10 to make it a bigger number. So we'll borrow that from this three and this three will become a two and this zero will become a 10. And so 10 minus seven is equal to three. And now going on to the thousands place, we have two minus eight. And because again, two is less than eight, we'll have to borrow a 10 to make it a bigger number. And we'll borrow that 10 from the nine and this nine will becoming, become an eight and this two will become a 12. And so 12 minus eight is equal to four. And then we have this leftover eight. And so this eight will go in the tens place. So our final answer turns out to be 84,348. In this last example here, we have 90,025 minus 987. So in order to solve this, we will do the same exact method that we did before. We'll start off in the ones place and subtract the columns from there. 
So in the ones place we have five minus seven, and so five is less than seven, so we'll need to borrow a 10 to make this five a bigger number. So we'll borrow that 10 from the tens place. So this two over here will become a one, and this five will become a 15. And so 15 minus seven is equal to eight. Now when we go on to the tens place, we have one minus eight, and because one is less than eight, we'll need to borrow a 10. But we have a problem. In the hundreds place and the thousands place, we have two zeros. So we can't borrow anything to make this, um, this one a bigger number. And so we can borrow um, a 10 from the 10 thousands place because this has a nine. So we can definitely borrow something. And so this nine will become an eight. And because we're borrowing a 10, we'll make this zero into a 10. And now we have to make this zero in the hundreds place a bigger number. And so in order to do that, we need to borrow another 10 and we'll borrow that from the thousands place. And so this 10 becomes a nine and this zero then becomes a 10. Now we can finally make this one in the tens place a bigger number. And so we'll borrow a one from the hundreds place. And so this 10 in the hundreds place will become a nine. And then this one will become a 10. So 10 minus eight we have in the tens place. So 10 minus eight is equal to two. And then in the hundreds place, we have nine minus nine. And so nine minus nine is zero. So we'll put down zero. And then we have a nine left over in the thousands place. So we'll get a nine. And then we have this leftover eight in the ten thousands place. So we have an eight. So our final answer actually turns out to be 89,028. Moving on to our practice problem, what I want you to do is pause your video and try to solve this problem on your own and see if you get the same exact answer as I did. In this next practice problem, please try to pause the video and do this problem on your own to see if you can get the correct answer. For this final practice problem, once again, pause your video and see if you can get the same answer as I did. Let's move on to multiplication. In this example, we are being told to multiply 789 times 23. In order to do this correctly, we must first take the ones digit of the second number and multiply with all the digits of the first number. And then we go on to the tenth digit and then multiply that digit with all the digits of this first number. So let's do an example. So we have three times nine to give us 27. So we put seven down and we carry over the two to be added when we multiply three times eight. So three times eight gives us 24 and 24 plus two gives us 26. So we put down the six and we carry over the two and then we multiply three times seven to get 21 and 21 plus two gives us 23. And so now we're done with the ones place. So we're no longer having to worry about that, that place. So we can put a zero under the seven because now we're moving on to the tens digit. And one thing I recommend is to scribble out or erase all the numbers that we had at the top to avoid any sorts of confusion when we're working with the tens digit. So now we're multiplying two times nine to get 18. And so we put down the eight and we carry over the one and we multiply two times eight to get 16 and then we add one to get 17. We put down the seven and we carry over the one and then we multiply two times seven to get 14 and then 14 plus one to get 15. And so now all there's left to do is to add all these numbers together. And before we add them together, make sure that they can clearly be seen in the same place values. And so make sure that they're completely aligned correctly. So these are completely aligned and now we can just add. So we add seven plus zero in the ones place to get seven. In the tens place, we have six plus eight to get 14. And we put down the four and we carry over the one into the hundreds place. And now we can add up one plus three plus seven to get 11. We put down one and we carry over the one once again in the thousands place. And then we add up one plus two plus five to get eight in the thousands place. And then we have a remaining one that belongs in the 10 thousands place. So our final answer actually ends up being 18,147. In this next example, we are being told to multiply 7,689 times 325. 
In order to do this correctly, we must first start off with the ones digit and multiply it with all the digits of the first number, and then we move on to the tens digit and then the hundreds digit. So exactly like the problem that we did before. So let's get started. We have five times nine, which gives us 45. So we put down the five and we carry over the four. And so then we have five times eight to give us 40 and 40 plus four gives us 44. So we put down the four and we carry over the four once again. And then we multiply five times six to get 30 and 30 plus four gives us 34. So you put down the four and we carry over the remaining three. And then we multiply five times seven to give us 35 and 35 plus three gives us 38. So we put down the 38. And now we're done using up the ones digit. So we no longer need to worry about the ones place. So we can put a zero under the five. And then we can also erase all the numbers at the top to avoid any sorts of confusion now that we're working with the tens digit. So now we have two times nine to give us 18. So we put down eight and we carry over the one. And then we multiply two times eight to give us 16 and 16 plus one gives us 17. 17 and we put down the seven and we carry over the one once again. And then we multiply two times six to get um, 12 and then we add up the one to get 13. And so we add, put down the three and then we carry over the remaining one and then we multiply two times seven to get 14 and 14 plus one to get 15. So we put down 15. And now we're done using up the tens digit as well. So now we will put a zero not only under the ones place but also the tens place because now we're only working with the hundreds digit. So in order to do this correctly, we multiply three times nine to get 27. So we put down the seven and we carry over the two and then we multiply three times eight to get 24 and 24 time plus um, two to get 26. And so we put down the six and we carry over the two and then we multiply three times six to get 18 and then 18 plus two to get 20. So we put down the zero and then we carry over the two and then we multiply three times seven to get 21 and 21 plus two gives us 23. And now all we have to do is add all of these digits up. And since they're already lined up, we don't have to worry about the places. And so in the ones place, we have five plus zero plus zero to give us five. In the tens place, we have four plus eight plus zero to give us 12. So we put down the two and we carry over the one. And then in the hundreds place, we have seven plus seven, which gives us 14, 14 plus four, which gives us 18 and 18 plus one, which gives us 19. So we put down the nine and we carry over the extra one. And then we add all this up. So we get six plus three, which gives us nine and nine plus one, which gives us 10 and 10 plus eight, which gives us 18. So we can add the eight and we can carry over the one. And so then we have one plus three plus five to give us nine. And so we put down the nine and then in the hundred thousands place, we have one plus three to give us four. And then in the millions place, we have two. So our final answer actually ends up being 2,498,925. In this last example here, we have 70,029 times 89. In order to solve this, we will use the same exact method that we did before. We will take the ones digit of the second number and multiply it with every single digit of the first number, and then we will move on to the tens digit. So let's start. So we have nine times nine, which gives us 81. So we'll put down the one, and then we'll carry over the eight. And so then we have nine times two to give us 18, and then 18 plus eight to give us 26. And so we put down the six and then we carry over the remaining two. And so we multiply nine times zero, which is in the hundreds place. And so then we get zero and then we add the two to get two. And then we multiply nine times zero once again because of the zero in the thousands place and we get zero. So we put down zero and then finally we multiply nine times seven to get 63. And now we're done with the ones digit of the second number. So we can put a zero under this one because we no longer need to worry about the ones place. And we can also erase these numbers on the top to avoid any confusion. So now we are ready to move on to the tens digit. So first we multiply eight times nine to get 72. And so we put down the two and carry over the seven. 
And so eight times two gives us 16, and then 16 plus seven gives us 23. So we put down the three and then we carry over the remaining two. And then we get eight times zero to give us zero, and then adding the two to give us two. And then we have eight times zero to give us zero once again. So we put down the zero. And then finally we multiply eight times seven to give us 56. And so then we can add all these digits up because they're all lined up by place value. So first, let's work on the ones place. So we have one plus zero, which gives us one. And then in the tens place, we have six plus two, which gives us eight. In the hundreds place, we have two plus three, which gives us five. In the thousands place, we have zero plus two, which gives us two. In the ten thousands place, we have three plus zero, which gives us three. In the hundred thousands place, we have six plus six, which gives us 12. And so we put down the two and we carry over the one to the millions place. And so one plus five gives us six for the millions place. So our final answer actually ends up being 6,232,581. Now it's time for some practice problems. Please pause this video and see if you can do these problems on your own and then get the same exact answer as I do. In this next practice problem, once again, please pause the video and work on it and see if you can get the exact same answer as I did. And then now for this last problem, please pause the video once again and see if you can get the correct answer. Let's move on to some division. In this example, we are being told to divide 7,595 by five. Before we go on to this problem, it's really great to go over some terms. The number inside the division symbol is called the dividend because it, because it is the number that is being divided. So 7,595 is the dividend. The number that's doing the dividing is called the divisor. So in this case, the divisor is five. And the number that we get when we're done dividing is called the quotient. So in order to get the quotient, we must first look at the first digit of the dividend, which is seven in this case, and ask ourselves what number times five will get us closest to seven and less than it. So we know that we can't get seven exactly when we multiply five by a number, but we can get close to it. So we know that one times five will get us closest to seven because if we do two times five, we'll get 10 and 10 is too far away. And so um, when we subtract these two numbers, we get two. If we had 10 and if we used two instead of one, we would get a negative number and it wouldn't work. So now we have two, which is way less than five. So there's no number that we can multiply five by to get this exactly to two or closest to two. So we must use the help of the next digit of the dividend, which is five, and bring it down next to the two to get 25. And so we know that 25 is divisible by five because five times five is 25. So we just put down the five here and we multiply five times five to get 25. And we put that underneath the 25 and subtract it to get zero. And now we have a problem because We've reached a zero, which means that the problem should end, but we still have the two remaining digits left, nine and five, from the dividend. So we must bring down the nine, and now we must ask ourselves, what number times five will get us closest to nine, but not far beyond it? So we know that one times five will get us closest to nine, because um, nine minus five is equal to four. And if we had done, let's say, two, it would be too far because five times two is 10. And when you subtract um, nine minus 10, you get a negative number. So it would not work. And so now you're left with four. And four is, of course, less than five. So there's no other number that we can multiply five by to get really, really close to four or not too far beyond it. So we need to bring down the last digit of our dividend to get 45 instead. 
And now we know that 45 is, of course, divisible by 5 because 9 times 5 is equal to 45. So we bring down 45 here, and then we subtract it to get 0. So now we have our 0 remainder, and we have used up all of the digits of the dividend. So we're done, and we've come to our answer. So our final answer ends up being 1,519. So that should be our final answer. Going on to our next problem, we are being told to divide 13,920 by 3. And so now we have to figure this out by looking at the first digit of our dividend, like we did before. And so we have um, kind of a problem here because the first digit of our dividend is 1. And 1 is way less than 3, so there's no number that we can multiply by 3 to get as really, really close to 1. So then, if that does not work out, we have to look at the first and the second digit of the dividend combined. So we are looking at 13. So we have to ask ourselves what number times 3 can get us really, really close to 13, but not far beyond it. So we know that... Um, 4 times 3 is 12, and that's pretty close to, t to 13, and it doesn't go far beyond it. So when we subtract the two numbers, we get 1. And so now we have a problem because 1 is way less than 3, so we need to use the help of the, the following digit of the dividend. So we bring down the next digit, which is 9. So this n number turns into 19, and now we have to figure out one number times 3 gets us closest to 19. And in this case, we know that 6 times 3 is equal to 18, which is pretty close to 19. So we put down 6, and so 6 times 3 is 18, so we put down 18, and we subtract it to get 1. And so now, again, 1 is way less than 3, and there's no number that we can multiply by 3 to get really, really close to 1. So we have to bring down the next number, which is 2 which is um, something that turns the whole number into 12. And so now we, of course, know that 3 times 4 actually ends up being 12. So that's definitely the closest that we can get. So we put down 4. And so 3 times 4 is 12. So we put down 12 right here, and we subtract the 2 to get 0. And now we should be done with the problem. However, we can't forget that we have this last digit remaining. So we have to bring that down once again. And so now it's kind of very easy because what number times 3 will get us close to 0? Zero? 0, of course, because 0 times 3 is equal to 0. So we bring down the 0 and we subtract and we get 0. And we have no other digit of the dividend remaining. So our answer actually ends up being 4,640. And that is our quotient. In this next example, we are being told to divide 18,171 by 9. So just like we saw in the last problem, the first digit of the dividend is way too small to be divided by 9. And there's no number that can be multiplied by 9 to get closest to 1, because it's simply too small. So we must look at the first and the second digit combined. So instead of looking at 1, we'll be looking at 18. So we know that 2 times 9 is equal to 18, so 2 is the number that we can multiply by 9 to get closest to 18 because it gives us 18. So when we subtract the two numbers, we get 0. And so now we have a 0, but we have all these other digits left that are part of the dividend. So we bring down the next digit of the dividend, which is 1. And we see that there's still a problem because 1 is way far less than 9, and there's no number that we can multiply 9 by to get closest to 1. So the only option to do here when you put down a digit but it still does not work out is to put a 0, because 0 times 9 gives us 0, and so now when we subtract it, we get 1. So now we can help ourselves by bringing down the next digit of the number of the dividend which is 7 so now we have 17 and we know that the number that we can multiply 9 by to get closest to 17 is 1 because if we multiplied it by 2 we would get 18 which is greater than 17 so when we subtracted it we would get a negative number so the only number that works in this case is 1 because 1 times 9 is 9 and so when we subtract the 2 we get 
8. And so now that we have 8, 8 is less than 9, so of course it would not work for us to take a number to multiply it by 9 to get closest to 8. So we need to bring down the next and last digit of our dividend, which is 1. So we end up with 81. And we know that 81 is divisible by 9 because we know that 9 times 9 is 81. So 9 times 9 is 81, and we put down 81, and we subtract it to get 0. So our remainder is 0, and we've used up all the digits in the dividend. And so our answer and quotient turns out to be 2019. In this last example, we are being asked to divide 3,852 by 12. So again, as we've seen before, we realize that the first digit of the dividend is way too small to be divided by 12 because there's no number that we could possibly multiply by 12 to get closest to 3. Um, so we have to look at the first digit and the second digit combined. So we're looking at 38 instead of 3. So we know that the closest that we can get to 38 is by multiplying 12 times 3 because 12 times 3 gives us 36 and that's really really close to 38 but it doesn't go far beyond it so it's perfect so when we take these two numbers and subtract it we get 2 and now we have 2 which is a number way too far below 12 and there's no number that we can multiply by 12 to get closest to 2 it's just way too small so we need to take the next digit of the dividend, which in this case is 5, and bring it down to make the number 25 instead. And so the closest way that we can possibly get to 25 is by multiplying 12 times 2, because we know that 12 times 2 is 24, which is less than 25, but it's very close to it, and it doesn't go far beyond it, so it's a great number to use. And so now we can subtract these two numbers to get 1. And now we know that 1 is far less than 12 and there is no possible number that we could use to get closest to um, 1. And so we need to bring down the last digit of the dividend, which is 2, to get 12. And so now we of course know that 12 times 1 is equal to 12. So that's the closest and very spot on number that we can use to get to 12. So we know that 1 times 12 is 12, so we put it down right here and we subtract the two numbers to get 0. So now we end up with a 0 remainder and we've used up all of the digits in the dividend, so our final quotient ends up being 321. Now it's time for some practice problems, so please pause this video and see if you can do this problem on your own and get the same answer as I did. Going on to the next practice problem, once again, please pause your video and solve this on your own to see if you can get the correct answer. For this next problem, once again, pause your video and do this problem on your own to see if you can get the same answer. For our final practice problem, please once again pause your video and work this out on your own to see if you can get the right answer.